Welcome to Respect My Journey. I'm your host, Carl Krauser, the Cruising King, King Krauser, aka that old black magic. Salute and respect to Michael Hewitt Jr. Let's go. I hope Pitt wins tonight. up right over left we the best welcome to respect my journey i am your host called crowds of the cruising king king crowds of aka that old black magic man today is crazy man happy wednesday early in the morning i do not understand certain things like people are making this way too complicated one plus one is two number two and a half please do the math right put the one on top of the other one make a plus sign and then see what you get okay or if you want to be extra go get an apple put another apple right next to the other apple tell me how many apples you got that's a plus okay it's two okay now when you have extra players available you available for you on the court on your team on your bench you got to use them they there it's called having depth of your bench okay bench depth you know, so that means you have more available players that can actually play on the bench to help your team. They are available. They're not hurt. They're not red shirting in college. They're not sitting out. They're not doing anything. OK, there's no Prop 48. There's no educational problems. They're just there. They are available to play. So now everybody, we're talking about Michael Hewitt Jr. I want you to understand this. Check out this scenario. If I'm the head coach, no, just say you're the head coach. The fans, you're the head coach. And I'm the assistant coach. And I got a kid named Alexander Grumfeld. Alexander Grumfeld is going to be treated different than the head coach's player in, just say, Roger Green. Now, Roger Green... Is he's been brought in and recruited by the head coach, so he's going to get more minutes. This is how it goes for some people. He gets more minutes. He's going to be treated different, even if my man Grunfeld is coming in, kicking his butt, giving him the blues every day in practice, working hard, getting there early, getting shots up, everything you're supposed to do. He's doing everything he's supposed to do, getting his academics done, getting everything done. But Grunfeld is held to a certain account because if he feels uncomfortable and he goes to the coach, the assistant coach and that recruited him and he tells him, hey, there's nothing changing because you just went to, the, you know, you went to the coach already. You went to him twice already. Say, hey, coach, you know, I'm not I'm not comfortable with this. This is, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much kind of disrespectful. It's hard for somebody to deal with that's playing very hard, is playing well, who has gotten the games and been effective and who has gotten in practice and been very effective in practice and continues to get better. Who is a high volume scorer, a high volume player, plays all both ends of the court, everything else, and is a taller defender and a better defender and a better shooter. I'm just saying. So, with that said, now when you go back to the when that kid Grunfeld goes back to the coach the second time, hey coach, nothing's changing. What's going on, coach? And you know, you said if I put in the work, this and this will happen. 
if I if I stay keep my head down and stay quiet and I do my thing, this will happen. What happens is some people get treated different because they come from other schools. So people, these head coaches think, hey, man, he better knock it off. He should be happy to be here. He just transferred from multiple schools. He should just be happy to be here. Shoot. What you mean? You work and you playing in the ACC conference. You was just playing in this conference. You should be happy to be here. That's not cool. That isn't okay. Because a lot of different players that play in different conferences can kick some of these other players but that plays in these different conferences. But they just haven't been given an opportunity because of whatever else happened. Whatever role and journey they had to take, they took it. And some of them got here. Some of them didn't make it. God bless them. But now you got the kid Green over there, Roger Green. He can do whatever. He can be getting, you know, getting killed in practice, buckets put on his head, and he be getting killed in the games, or he can be getting blown by in the games and all this other stuff. But you made a promise to the family as the head coach. You made a promise to the kid. And now the other people have to suffer. And the team has to suffer. And the fans have to suffer. And the university has to suffer. And everything else. And people have to feel the way they feel. And then these other people, because of the way they are, they try to create a divide because they don't belong to the university per se. They didn't go here, so they don't belong to it. They don't have any passion for it. They don't have any love for it that much. They're just learning. You get what I'm saying? Knock it off. But hey, listen to what I said. One plus one is two, another two and a half. You do the math. Now, so now when the second player, you know, the assistant coach player comes and he says, hey, what what what, what should I do now? What, 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 what do you want to do now? Like, What's the next step, coach? Because I've been talking to some people, and I think it's best, you know, I probably feel better with, you know, going to a different school that's going to actually play me. Because, people, you have to understand this. That young fella, Michael Hewitt Jr., wakes up every day striving to become a better human being, a better student athlete, a better person, a better, like, a better sports player, a better everything. And you think it's okay for him to sit on the bench of an okay team and he's better than other players, that doesn't make sense to me. And then I don't think it makes sense for... Now, let me get back to the scenario. Now, Roger Green, he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to go too crazy, go too hard. Not saying he isn't working hard. Not saying, you know, the, the person isn't putting in work. But it's just he's not as effective as the other player would have been. He's not as effective in practice as the other player is. And it's just not adding up to what's going on. So the head coach can say, oh, well, when, when you know, when the, when the assistant coach comes in, because the assistant coach is scared to lose his job, so he's scared to speak up. He doesn't want to go back on it, you know, go back into asking people for, you know, favors and go back and ask anybody for, you know, you know for some help. Because he just probably got let go from his job for speaking up for a player. Some of these coaches don't want to speak up for their players because they're scared to lose their job or they're scared to get in hot water with the coach. And, you know, later on you might lose your job. Who knows? Or you might get replaced either way, a.k.a. you're out. So it's, it sucks. So now the, the, the assistant coach is going to stand up for you. And if your family try to stand up for you, now the, the coach is trying to dish your family and then tell you, and your family, well, why don't y'all just try somewhere else? Well, this, maybe this is the, uh, this is the place for you. Now, come on now. That isn't cool. That isn't right. You so quick, y'all coaches so quick to dismiss these kids just because you didn't recruit them. You didn't do this. And there's some of y'all, y'all did recruit them, and they still just see who you are as a person. They don't, they don't agree with it. They talk to their family members. Stop acting like these kids don't see who these human beings are in practice every day. And they don't get to know it. Stop acting like these kids aren't supposed to make the right choice if they uncomfortable. Stop acting like these kids aren't supposed to speak up, these young men and women. What is wrong with y'all people out there in the world? They are supposed to speak up when they feel uncomfortable. Don't you teach your kids that? They are supposed to speak up when they don't want to stay in a spot. Don't you teach your kids that? Knock it off. Stop treating everybody else's kid like... You don't care, like you don't have kids. And if you don't have kids, man, get around somebody. I'm sure you have a niece and nephew. I'm sure you have a little cousin or somebody out there. That's why you have a family. Knock it off. And if you don't, watch a TV special. Sheesh, fudge cups. You people blow my mind with this ignorance. With the way you just nonchalant blow people off. This people cut off people opportunities. Just mess with people's lives. And then you get sad and mad when stuff happens to you. Oh, my 
goodness gracious. What in the world? You gotta be kidding me, man. Y'all people are some of the most craziest people in the world to believe that this is okay and everything is going to keep happening. You want to point to the transfer portal. I'm glad they have the transfer portal. How many kids would be stuck around some of these shaky coaches not making no money, having these other stories in their journey about this coach messing with them, this coach doing that, and they can't speak up? If that's what y'all okay with, it speaks violence for who you are as a human being. Knock it off. Easy. Just going to give it up to Belak. Now Sharif. Under he goes. 30 to go. Crunch time regard. Who wants the shot? Tavares had an open look. The hesitation. Jordan T, look at me. Jordan T, number two, three. Great job. I love it. Ten seconds to go. Do you draw it up for Kramer? Peter Kramer. I'm a bucket two. Let's go! I love basketball! Foster for the win! Oh! Peter Kramer, a hero in Daytona Heights, with a game high 29. His game winner with three seconds to go. Lips Hampton over Highlands 61 59. Take another look. Captain Kramer to the rescue. Peter Kramer, we respect your journey. From the free throw line. But oh. another chance, Smith, Barber, a big three. Hey, Mr. Barber, take me to the chair. I am here. Now loving it. Be proud. Be excited. These two schools separated by just four miles and 12 total minutes. But tonight, it goes the way of the boys up north wearing the gold and blue. Mount Lebanon takes down its arch rival, Upper St. Clair, 60 to 43 to claim the first place spot in 6A, Section 2, entering the final week of the regular season. And Mount Lebanon, we respect your journey. 22 to point is here. Look at the crowd. Look at the double set. This is Mount Lebanon. As you know in life, sometimes you got to take things into your own hand. Even though my groin is torn, I got to take Jake Kidd to the rack of the USA team. Knock it off the White Howard. Kobe, watch me. Thank y'all all for watching. Respect my journey. Good luck to Michael Hewitt Jr. Salute and respect to the Hewitt family. Always love. X up.